Good morning. This is St. Mark's Episcopal Church, Richmond, Texas. I am Chris Abbott, Christian Formation Teacher. This class is Kids Kingdom, uh, intended for elementary age students in grades one through five. Uh, this lesson is intended for Sunday, November the 15th, 2020. This concludes 10 YouTube lessons um, for the fall, where we have worked our way through um, a good portion of uh, Genesis. Uh, I hope you have found this uh, 10 weeks to be um, interesting, informative, challenging, informational, all of those things that I hope uh, that you and your um, family got out of these lessons. Uh, we will be taking a break then uh, going on into uh, Advent and Christmas and so on and um, you will be hearing from us about how we will be continuing with Kids Kingdom um, after that. So uh, let's begin please in prayer. The Lord be with you. We ask you to help us have patience and courage to wait for your guidance. Amen. All right. Uh, last week, we um, read for the first time uh, the story of Esau and Jacob and the uh, competition for the birthright and the trickery that went on between the, two of, between the two of them about that. And so we're going to read the story again just um, to make sure we're all uh, can remember all of the things about it and uh, understand it completely before we um, start on the activity for today. So, if you would open uh, your children's illustrated Bible to page 46 and 47. Esau and Jacob. After many years of childlessness, Rebekah gave birth to twin boys. The elder, who was covered from head to toe with thick red hair, they named Esau. The younger, born holding his twin's heel, they called Jacob. Esau, whom Isaac loved best, grew up a strong and adventurous hunter, while Jacob, his mother's favorite, preferred staying at home. One day, Jacob was cooking some lentil stew when his brother came in faint with hunger. Quick, I'm famished. Give me some of that, Esau demanded. I will, Jacob replied, if you give up your rights as firstborn to me. <laughs> Esau laughed. What use to me are my rights when what I want is a good meal? Then give me your word. And Esau gave his word, and so exchanged his birthright for a plateful of stew and some bread. Isaac, old and blind and near to death, asked Esau to shoot a deer and prepare the dish of venison he so loved. I want to taste it one last time, so I may bless you before I die, he told him. Rebecca overheard these words and determined that Jacob, not Esau, should receive his father's blessing. I will cook the dish, she said, and you must take it to your father in Esau's place. Go now and fetch me two young goats. But he will know I'm not Esau, said Jacob. Esau is covered in hair and my skin is smooth. He will know that I am deceiving him and will put a curse on me. Do as I say and all will be well. And Rebekah dressed Jacob in his brother's clothes and covered his hands and shoulders with goat skin. She gave him some bread and a bowl of stew made from goat's meat and then she sent him to his father. Who are you? Isaac asked, come near me so that I may feel you. The voice is Jacob's, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Are you really my eldest son? I am, Jacob lied. So Esau was deceived, believing that it was Esau, sorry, so Isaac was deceived, believing it was Esau who was with him. He ate the food that he had brought to him. He blessed Jacob and promised that he should have everything due to the firstborn. 
May you be happy and prosperous and may good fortune come to all who wish you well. Scarcely had Jacob left his father's tent than Esau arrived home from the hunt. Expertly, he prepared the dish of venison and took it to Isaac. Here's your favorite dish, father, he said. Who are you? asked the old man. I'm Esau, your oldest son. Then who is it who had just now been with me and to whom I have given my blessing? Isaac asked, his voice trembling. When Esau heard his father's words, he cried out bitterly. He realized the trick that had been played and he begged his father to bless him and give him his rights. I will bless you, said Isaac, but I cannot give you what I have already promised to your brother. Isaac knew that the blessing was given before God and it could not be altered. Esau was filled with hatred for Jacob. He knew that Isaac would soon be dead, so he planned to kill Jacob as soon as the period of mourning for his father's death had passed. But Rebekah heard of his plot and was able to warn Jacob. Your brother is planning to kill you, she told him. Go at once to my brother Laban in Haran and stay there until Esau's anger cools. I will let you know when it's safe to return. So Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. Now, as we talked about last week, this blessing is quite important. And it is not just inheriting something from somebody who might have died before you, but it's God's blessing on you and your family. And it's a, a way to connect the present and the past and the future. But there were some rules to these blessings. And once the blessing had been given, it could not be taken back, couldn't change your mind, and you couldn't just alter the whole thing. So, in this situation here, Isaac, thinking that he's blessing Esau, has actually blessed Jacob. He's been fooled. He's been tricked. He's been deceived. Not, certainly not, certainly not a good thing, no. And we remember that, uh, Esau is Isaac's favorite, and Jacob is Rebekah's favorite. So that, that comes into play a little bit here, too. So, does Esau have a right to be angry and upset? Well, yes, he does. He was the oldest. The blessing was supposed to come to him. Um, his father didn't realize he was being tricked. He didn't realize that that was... Uh, that he was giving the birthright to the wrong brother. So yes, Esau probably does have a right um, to be upset. Um, I'm not sure he should be upset enough that he thought he was going to go ahead and kill his brother, Jacob. That seems like a, a, a bit much, but um, when the birthright was worth something, uh, when Isaac was going to die, then of course, um, Esau thought it was only fair for the birthright um, to come to him. Um, let me ask you, ha um, have you ever wanted something so much that you did something kind of foolish to get it? Maybe you tricked somebody. Maybe you lied. Dick lied in the story. He, he out and out says that he's his brother and he's not. He lied. But have you ever done something like that when you tricked somebody, lied, told a not truth? Yeah, those would be things that perhaps we're tempted to do sometimes and that we have to be careful that we're not doing those because that would be dishonest and that would be not truthful. And that certainly would not be something that God would want us um, to be doing. So. The activity for today is to um, actually um, use, uh, you have your um, supply bag that says uh, November the 15th, the clothespin puppets. And in your bag, um, you received um, 
uh, four um, clothes pin. They're called doll clothes pins or ancient or ancient clothes pins. They don't look like clothes pins of today, but they have a little round part that can be used for a head, and these two parts that would be um, would be legs. And you received some um, pipe cleaners, and you got some wild um, yarn to be used for some hair and uh, some cloth that you use um, to dress the puppets and also a little baggie of play-doh that you use for a stand for your puppet so i'll show you my esau here's my esau and of course we read that esau has all this wild red hair so i used um, the yarn for the wild red hair and uh, I wrapped him in some of the cloth and I used um, uh, some of the uh, pipe cleaners and wrapped around and made it kind of like a belt. Uh, I used a Sharpie and put a couple of eyes on my little <laughs> uh, Esau and then I used um, some of the Play-Doh to make a little stand for the puppet. You, of course, will be making four of them. You'll be making um, Rebecca and Isaac, and Esau, and Jacob. And when you get all done with them and the Play-Doh dries, um, they actually stand up like a little stand. And what I'm asking you then is to tell the story of Jacob and Esau using these little puppets, almost like a little play, like a little puppet show. And Jacob and Esau can be talking and Rebecca is trying to help Jacob and Isaac is, however you want to act it all out, following the story from the Bible, but that might be a fun way for you to act the story out and remember it because you'll have the four characters, the four puppets in, in order to do that and act the story out and maybe share that with a member of your family that uh, has forgotten about the uh, Esau and Jacob story and you could be reminding them about the story from Genesis with your um, little puppets. So, uh, you know that we always conclude our lesson with um, the Lord's Prayer. Oh. The Lord be with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As I said, this concludes uh, ten lessons this fall. Uh, from the book of Genesis here for um, Kids Kingdom on YouTube. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, sharing the stories from Genesis with you and I'm still looking forward to receiving some more pictures from some of you so that I can see what uh, your different activities have looked like this fall. Uh, we will be in touch and let you know what the next um, segment of Kids Kingdom will be like. So. In the meantime, goodbye from St. Mark's uh, Richmond.